Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. Welcome back to Data Structures and Game Maker. Today it's time to talk about stacks. If you're familiar with queues, which was the subject of the last one of these videos, stacks are very similar. The main idea of a queue in computer science is that data can be removed from the queue in the same order that it was added. And when it comes to stacks, it's the exact opposite. Data can be removed from a queue in the reverse order that it was added. In academic sounding terms, this is known as first in, first out for queues, and first in, last out for stacks, because that is the order in which you add and remove data. But between you and me, I don't think I've ever actually heard anybody say those words outside the context of like the final exam for a computer science class. So we can create a stack. We can say stack equals ds stack create. Uh, that looks very much the same as the other data structure creation functions that I've talked about. When we are finished with a stack, we can ds stack destroy either at the end of a script if this is a local variable in the object destroy event if we're dealing with an object, something like that. This needs to take a parameter. When it comes to adding and removing data from a stack, uh, just like queues, stacks have their own set of vocabulary words. When you add something to a stack, it is known as pushing something onto the stack. Uh, when you remove something from a stack, it is known as popping data from a stack. When you push something onto a stack, you need to supply both the, uh, the index of the, of the stack structure that you want to add to and also the value. This is probably easiest understood if you think about a physical stack of objects. So if I'm physically standing in my backyard and I have a pile of stones and I'm trying to stack them on top of each other, I can push, let's say, stone one onto the stack. I can push stone two onto the stack. And I can keep doing this, stone one, stone two, stone three. Uh, maybe once we've got to the end, I can, I can, um, I can top it off with a, with a flower pot or something. At each of these points in time, the only piece of data that is accessible to the stack is whatever was most recently added. So if I were to show the value of DS stack pop at the end, um, let's see, show message ds stack pop we're going to see that we are going to have the uh the flower pot okay and as i always forget to do game end at the bottom here so that i uh so that i don't have to close the window myself if i were to do this repeatedly if i were to uh pop three items from the stack and show what they are to the user in a message box we would see that we have the flower pot first then stone three stone two and then if I were to do it again, we would have stone one. So data can be popped off of a stack in reverse order that it was added. Uh, if you want to just see what's at the top of a stack, if you want to see what's currently at the top of the stack without actually removing it, uh, you can say ds stack top like so. And this is just going to show us the value of um, whatever's on the top of the stack without removing it. So if I were to do this, um, multiple times, we would see that we are going to see that the top of the stack contains the flower pot, but it's not going to be removed. And like a lot of the other data structures in Game Maker, there's a couple helpful functions. There is ds stack size uh, for if you want to uh, if you want to see how many items are on the stack. Uh, for example, if I were to show message dx ds stack size um, with uh, without removing anything, we would see that this has a value of four because there are four items in the stack. Uh, there is also ds stack Clear can be helpful. Uh, DS stack, as with all the other data structures, copy can be helpful if you want to copy the contents of one stack to another. Uh, there is, of course, write and read. Again, I don't really recommend using these. These are rather old. They're not really useful for things. And to be honest, writing and reading stacks to a string or to a file or whatever isn't something that you really need to do very often. And are there any other ones? Stacks are pretty simple. There's not a lot to them. There's DS stack empty. Um, I don't think I mentioned this one in the other videos, but this is another one that's common to all data structures, or pretty much all data structures except for uh, grids. And you can use it to see if the size of the stack equals zero. So again, to reiterate, the only really important thing you need to know about stacks is that the only element you can access is whatever was most recently added. If we, um, if we try to access something below whatever's on the top of the stack, if we try to access something below the flower pot, we are going to find that that is not going to work very well. Uh, we can't access, for example, stone three or stone two without first removing whatever is beneath it. In terms of what you would use this for, stacks are probably honestly the data structure that I use least often in Game Maker. 
The common example when it comes to games is usually something resembling a deck of cards. So if you have a deck of cards and you want the user to only be able to uh, remove whatever element is on the top of the deck of cards, you would use a stack to represent that. But honestly, even for that, you would probably be just as well using something like a regular array or maybe a DS list if you, um, if you really want. Because then you could also do other operations on the def deck of cards, such as shuffling them or iterating over them in order or reversing them or that sort of thing. A bit of a classical non-game related use for, uh, for stacks is when it comes to interpreting uh, math expressions. But the shunting yard algorithm and reverse Polish notation tends to not be something you really need to do unless you're trying to, for example, create your own programming language. As with the other data structures, uh, you can put pretty much whatever you want into a stack. It doesn't have to be a string. It can be, for example, a number. It can be, for example, a struct of some sort. You can put any data type into a stack that you want. But I'm going to stop here. This has been another rather short video. Uh, stacks are pretty simple. There's not too much to say about them. I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one of these and one let's make a tower defense game. This week might see uh, three game dev videos because both this and the Q's video is rather short and if I can get those both finished on time, I'll just post them both. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute toward these videos being made, there'll be links to that in all the usual places. You could see your name in the credits, hear yourself shouted out at the end, see a preview of my future plans, all that fun stuff. I like to focus on the weirder parts of Game Maker, including but not limited to 3D things and shader things. Otherwise, I hope you found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Connor, Edward Holt, Emily Koyo, Halo Factory, Posho, Sindra Larson, Tusk, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.